Chapter Five of Pond and Stream by Arthur Ransom. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Five: Our Own Aquarium. It is quite a long time since the imp and the elf first started a guest house for the water people. One day, when the elf was very small, and I was showing her pictures in a book and telling her about the sticklebacks and the minnows and the loaches and the caddis worms and all the rest of them she sat silent for a long time and then said suddenly i want to ask him and wriggled down from my knee and went off to find the imp presently they came back together we want to have some caddises for our own they said and i understood that the elf had thought it only fair to consult the imp before asking me about them for herself that very day we began to plan the guest house at first it was to be no more than a jam-pot with mud in the bottom of it for the caddises then we thought that perhaps even a caddis would like a house a little bigger than a jam-pot or even than a big marmalade jar even caddises crawl the next bigger thing to one of the big marmalade jars that they have in the nursery is a basin and basins are no use at all they tip over if you lean on their edges to look at anything that is crawling about inside there was nothing for it but to plan something new and if we were to have something made on purpose if we were to have a really big home for caddises there was no reason why we should not plan it bigger still and be able to keep minnows in it or goldfish or even a smallish eel so we spent a splendid afternoon planning the guest house and next morning walked over the fields to the village with a lot of scribbling in our hands the scribbles were to explain what sort of a guest house we wanted we walked straight through the village to the glazier shop a glazier is a man who comes and mends windows when tennis balls have gone through them and broken them this glazier was very nice and kind he let the elf and the imp climb up and sit on his table while he looked over our scribbles and then took a big sheet of paper and made a neat drawing himself he made what he called a plan and what he called an elevation and then he drew a real picture of what the guest house was to be and put a curly fish with a winking eye swimming about in the middle this picture he gave to the children so that they could think about the guest house while it was being made he promised that we should have it in a week's time it was a fortnight before it came that is the way of glaziers who are leisurely but very clever for though the guest house was so long in coming it was splendid when it came it had four sides made of glass with wooden pillars at the corners painted green it was like a house whose windows had spread all over the walls and it was so big that the imp could easily stand in it with both feet a good way apart too we filled it with water and it did not leak there was a tube hidden in the bottom of it with a tap at the side so that we could let the water out and put fresh water in without having to take out the fish that was important as we did not want to disturb our guests and all the water folk want their water changed from time to time we found a fine place for the aquarium on one of the broad bookshelves in the study and as soon as we had fixed it there we set about furnishing it and filling it with guests we covered the bottom with sand and put some big stones in it with holes in them to make hiding places for the fish then we set off for the duck pond with three jam pots and two small nets we did not bother to play with the geese that day or even to look at the donkey we went straight to the edge of the pond and began pulling some of the green duckweed out on the banks we put a good deal of it into one of the pots and then searched through a lot more looking for those little round flat snails that i told you about in the second chapter we wanted plenty of them because they keep the aquarium healthy and the water sweet and fresh as soon as we had plenty of duckweed and plenty of snails we went on over the fields to the beck and here we got half a dozen caddis worms and a water shrimp and some minnows we let the shrimp go because he does not live well except in running water but the others we carried home with us in the jam pots which we had to pretend into triumphal carriages for we were bringing home our first guests 
the imp and the elf sat on high chairs in the study till bedtime watching the caddises crawl about in the mud and the minnows flit in and out among the stones and before they went to bed they said good night very solemnly to the water people for it is always best to be polite even if the water people do not understand and as the elf said well, perhaps they do next morning the carrier stopped on his way from the station with a big can that had come by train from london and in the dark depths of the can we could see golden flashes for i had written to town for half a dozen golden fish to come and stay with the minnows and after that the guest-house was always full from time to time new guests came and others went away let loose again in the duck pond or the stream always the guests are changing some one sent us a little water tortoise for a present and we kept him with us for a little while and then put him in the pond to see life on his own account we have had little eels from the stream and sticklebacks but these are quarrelsome folk and tadpoles and loaches and carp who are like greenish goldfish and long-bodied gudgeon and silvery roach every morning after breakfast before setting out walking the children come into the study and feed the guests with worms and ant eggs and crumbled vermicelli the guest house is like a little water world where we can see the smaller water folk living in their own way it is a beautiful little world with its clear water and green weed with the little fishes swimming under the roots of the weeds and darting among the crevices of the stones and it is a little world that is not very difficult to manage we have to be careful not to overfeed the guests and yet we must be sure that they have enough to eat we have to keep the water clear changing it every other day pouring fresh water in at the top and running out the old through the tap at the bottom it is a little world that any one can manage who loves the water folk well enough to take plenty of trouble with them and now do you know we have come to the end there is such a lot to write about the things that are jolly and wet that the imp and the elf say i have missed out half the things that ought to be put in and i know that i have missed out a very great deal more than that but if you really care for the water folk you will find out the best of all things that cannot be written here by going to the stream side or the pond side or the side of the lake and making friends with the water people for yourself end of chapter five end of pond and stream by arthur ransom